the fallout from that game there against Liverpool, spectacularly awful as far as Manchester United fans are concerned. And if you didn't watch it, on Sky Sports, after the game, Gary Neville was talking with Jamie Carragher, with Graham Soonis, not with Jermaine Defoe, who sat there like a mute in the corner. Poor guy. Should have been Roy Keane, really. Um, and to say that it was an interesting conversation is kind of understating it. Uh, what I want to do in this video is run through what they said, give my reaction to what they said, discuss whether the points that Gary raises, that Jamie raises, that Graham raises are fair. And I want you to let me know what you think about it all, as always, in the comments. But let's get straight into it. And let's take a look at what the reaction was from Gary Neville after the game. It's close to winning the league. I don't think they're close to winning the Champions League. I don't think they're close to Liverpool, City or Chelsea at the moment. Well, no one's going to argue differently on that one, are they? Um, it's painful watching that interview. It's painful. You know, we see managers, you know, I've been there for a short period, um, had to field questions like that. And it's it's not great, but it's part of the game. It's what you're there for. You're at Manchester United. It's a big boys game. It's a big boys club. I tell you what, that's one thing that I've that's one thing I would describe today as painful. Today, for, today has been heartbreaking for me. Uh, I really, really wanted Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to succeed, but today was a day where I was just like, nah, it's past the point of no return. Now you saw my match reaction. You saw what I said, and I'm gonna absolutely stand by that. Um, and it was painful. It was painful for every single Manchester United fan. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, well, didn't think the 6-1 could get worse against Spurs, but then today happened. And you, know, you lose a game against Liverpool 5-0 at home, you're going to come under horrific pressure. And what I've got no doubts is that the club a lot more... The club's different today. If this was in the immediate post Alex, Sir Alex Ferguson aftermath, Ole would be in massive trouble tonight. I think the club will hold the nerve. I don't think they planned for a new manager in this season. I think they'll get to the end of the season. I think they'll sit with Oli to the end of the season. I know there'll be a massive outcry. Right, and this is where we have to discuss things. Uh, Gary, they're basically saying that Manchester United, because they haven't got a, a plan written down that, that Solskjaer might get sacked. I mean, that's just, that's just terrible planning, first of all, because you have to, as a business, you have to look at all eventualities. Best case scenario, worst case scenario. It's called forecasting. Standard business practice. Um just because Man United wouldn't have planned for it, Man United would not have planned for a team that has Ronaldo, Sancho, and Varane who have the, like the worst defensive record in the league. Not that not that any of them are defenders, but that it's the scale of the ambition of the club. Nobody would have uh, guessed that we would have lost against Villa, that we got beaten five nil against Liverpool. Things change, circumstances change, context is everything. Even if Manchester United did not plan for this, Manchester United now have to plan moving forward. And I just, and it might just be the emotion of the day, but I don't see how that involves Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as manager. I don't know how things change under him. Let's carry on listening to what Gary had to say. Uh, from, from fans, from, from the media, from everybody, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should be sacked. And I can understand that after that game, 5 0. Yeah, no of course he can. Enough. That was a monstrously bad day. And it takes some recovery. I lost 7 0 in Barcelona once. I knew full well after that I was struggling, I was done. And, but I think this club is a lot more stable in terms of the ownership. I'd like to hear from the ownership more. They said they're going to communicate with the fans. Stable ownership, Manchester United? They're not really th three phrases I would ever, ever put together. And they haven't done. I think now might be the time for them to communicate with the fans if they're going to back the manager over the next six to eight months, which I think they will. I mean, the, the club has sort of come out, really. Was it last week, week before, when it was said that Solskjaer is 100% backed? He's definitely going to be backed. Nothing but... but Football results change everything. It's it, we we said that, you know, coming out of from the international break, it was an opportunity for Manchester United and Solskjaer to bury the pain of what we saw pre-international break with, you know, uh, Everton and Villa and Young Boys and West Ham League Cup, and the two wins that we had there were late dramatic winners after performances. Uh, West Ham was better, but after performances where United were largely out of it, and then we've had Leicester since, and then at Atalanta first half, and then that. If things are just getting worse. If they just seem to be getting worse and worse and worse. Well, because, you know, we've all asked the questions. The media asked the questions of the club's communications department over the last few weeks. And the feeling is, no, we believe in this project. This right. is going to be some bumps and obstacles along the way. Well, Sancho, uh, bumps and obstacles. You're being polite as hell there, Gary. Sancho, Varane, Ronaldo have not settled into the team yet. But once they do, we'll start to get it right and they'll get results. Right, no, I, I, that, I'm just looking at Guff here. And, I, and at this point... I would say I kind of feel a little bit sorry for Gary Neville because he's he's clearly at a point where, I mean, I would hate to be in this position. 
I really would I, I, on TV in a studio there with 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 Sunus and Gary clearly is someone who's torn. He's somebody who who probably does feel that his friend Ole Gunnar Solskjaer isn't good enough to take Manchester United forward. And the justifications for him and these arguments, as we'll see throughout this reaction video, they start to they start to wear thin. Uh, and Gary can't really say much more. Because he knows that there isn't really much justification for what he's saying. So he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And he's doubling down on what he's saying with, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And for a lot of you, that's just that's not the right thing to do. But let's go on here and let's see what Jamie Carragher had to say on that. Because, uh, well, unsurprisingly, Jamie Carragher can take a different stance on it. Because he doesn't know Solskjaer personally. And that is the thing that is making it difficult for Gary here. It's impossible to be unbiased in football. That is what football is all about. You support a football club. You, have, you don't like the other ones. It's, it's, what, it's what it is. You're, you're partisan. It's what you're, you're grown up to be. Support one club, despise the rest. And Gary Neville is Manchester United born and bred. Not born and bred, but... Um, and he's... Solskjaer is his, is his friend and his, as well as his colleague and, and everything in between. And that's why he's struggling with this sort of fallout. But this is what... Jamie Carragher had to say on the situation here about Manchester United and about the idea of what comes next with Solskjaer. The terrified to make a change was the terrified to bring someone in like they did with Van Gaal or Mourinho and it's not a Manchester United guy. So I think the Manchester United board right now, I don't think it's a case of staying strong. I think it's a case of actually panicking. What would you do? And that's where I can't disagree with Jamie, Jamie Carragher, man. Like, like him or loathe him. Uh, he's a good pundit. He clearly knows football. It's just the same as a scouser. But what Jamie Carragher is saying there is true because I'm shit scared of it. That's what I am most terrified about. That's why I was so firmly in that corner for Solskjaer, sitting there, batting off, punching people, trying to get any sort of positive, trying to get any sort of thing to hold on to. But I've kind of run out of things to hold on to. It's why I did my video today. It's why I called it on that Solskjaer has to be sacked. And it's why so many United fans, after that game today, there's nothing to hold on to. But yeah, I am terrified about the fucking U-turn that could happen again now. Because it's clear it's not going to work with Solskjaer. But what is that? Whoever comes next has to be a continuation of this path that's been trodden by Solskjaer. This U-turn we did and we we shifted after Mourinho. And we need to stay on this path. And that's, the th that's what I'm terrified about. And so, Jamie, well, you called that right because I know exactly what you mean. Because I'm terrified. We don't want to go back to someone coming in and doing their own thing. But on Monday, I was, I wasn't trying to be critical of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I was, I was, I actually think he's done a really good job to this point. And he has, and I'm definitely doing a video on this, by the way. I don't want to hear any sort of, any crap towards Solskjaer about you know, oh, he's just, because you're just looking at what's going on right now. He has done a very good job, and I will do a video on that specifically. So don't worry about that. You want to go back to someone coming in and doing their own thing. But on Monday, I was... Oh, repeating this that. Point, but right at this point now, to take on Klopp, Guardiola, Tuchel, Liverpool, Manchester City, Chelsea, you need a better manager. Now, I wasn't saying that in a disrespectful way, and I'm not saying it now on the back of that right. interview. I felt for all you're going to solve. Do you th okay, well, again, I'm going to ask you what you think. I kind of know the answer, but do you think that Jamie Carragher is right here? I think he is. I would love to... I, I've given Ole Gunnar Solskjaer so many opportunities as a, as a fan, just as a fan. Stuck behind him, supported him, saying, look, nah, maybe it'll be different. Maybe it'll be, uh, next time it'll be different. Uh, no, no, nah, no, nah, okay, nah, next time it'll be different. I can't do that anymore. Today was the breaking point for me when I've said he's gone past the point of no return. He's been to the brink and he's been pulled back. Today he was on the brink. Further, he's fur closer to the edge than he's ever been before. And the players put in that sort of performance. It's, it's 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 past the point of no return now as far as I'm concerned managing a club he loves that will be the darkest day in his football career forget yep. his time at Manchester 100% his will. career and he'll never forget that so you'd always have that sympathy for a manager and I don't want to get involved in a, in a slanger match and all he said something back and rightly so yep. he should back, back his own corner but this thing of asking for managers to be sacked I, I'm not comfortable with saying that way it's sacked someone should go seems like I don't like saying that when we talk about Manchester United as a team, yeah. we're comfortable by saying Fred's not good enough or McTominay's not good enough and they need a new midfield player. So I don't feel too bad in terms of fair, saying Manchester United point. need a better manager. Fair point there. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer isn't a manager for Manchester United. Now, 
that look we all we all knew that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was learning on the job we all knew that it was going to be a case of will he grow into that manager that can be someone who can compete with Tuchel with Klopp with, with Mourinho with Guardiola and he hasn't he just hasn't and I think at this point we all have to sort of agree on that and going on here uh what's this one so this is Gary no it's Jamie Carragher speaking about it's not just of course are they going to Solskjaer with the problems like Manchester United because it, yeah, it's the coaching staff too. Staff Michael Carrick being an England squad. I think Dan, Darren Fletcher's got a role as well. Are they going to Solskjaer? Uh, I think there's young coach in as well. Yeah, Kieran he McKenna. needs a bit more experience to be fair. Well, Kieran McKenna is coming. Yeah. I've, I've been saying this for a long time, for a long, long time, that the idea that you've got a manager learning on the job at the same time as a... F- as your assistant coach learning on the job at the same time as your first team coach learning on the job at the same time as your technical director learning on the job everybody's learning on the job how are you going to learn on the job if nobody's teaching you and mike Phelan is the man who's supposed to be there as the wise old owl sitting on there sitting on the perch just looking down telling people what to do any problems come to mike i'll sort it out for you like mike from breaking bad he's certainly not mike herman trout that's all i'll say mike Phelan has failed i think mike Phelan's been central and essential for the good work that's happened with Solskjaer as manager. But I also think he's central and essential to the to the problems that we've got at the moment. So you can't say three years in that the experience of Mike Phelan is there because it's been proven that it's just not good enough. It's just not working. Simple as that. Manchester United, and this is a phrase he's used at times, should have the best in class. Should have some of the best coaches or manager in the world. Right. Now, if you have Oli as the manager... For me, you should have someone like Carlos Quiros as a coach. You can't have people learning on the job, three or four of a staff who've never been at a club at this side yeah. at any time in their lives in terms of a coaching position. They can't all be there at the same time. So if you're going to give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job two or three yeah. years, yes, Mike Feeling came in, but I don't think Mike Feeling's the coach. I'm not being disrespectful because they've got obviously yeah. Michael Carrick there. I mean, look, it, it, again, he's not wrong in anything he is saying here. Jamie Carragher is a, a sort of... I suppose preaching what a lot of United fans uh, have been saying for some time, certainly with the coaches anyway, and they've just given Mike Phelan a new contract, which blows my mind, and apparently in talks with Michael Carrick and Kieran McKenna for new deals. It's mad. But going into more reaction, I think uh, as interesting as it was to hear what Gary said originally there about Manchester United, the fact that he feels still that the ball will not sack Solskjaer simply because they've got a plan that they need to stick to, regimented plan, no one planned for this, man. No one planned for Manchester United to be a worse team with around Sancho and Ronaldo. So things can change. Things have to change. Simple. I'm, I'm not saying that that is in Solskjaer being sacked or that I'm at that point now, but I'm saying like things can change. Opinions can change. I've changed my opinion on, I don't know, De Gea, for example. I thought it was the right time to sell him in the summer. No, he's the best player at the club right now, probably. In goal, anyway, obviously. Um, so I've changed my opinion on it. Just as Manchester United can change their opinion on 100% backing Solskjaer. Gary... This is what he had to say when he was um, asked about the staff at Manchester United, because he didn't, he wasn't very happy in this situation really when asked that question. People and Graham stopped short. Of, you know, Graham said over there that you know, I feel uncomfortable turning my attention to work that I don't even see. What I do know is that the reflection of that on the pitch is not good enough. The reflection of that on the pitch is not good enough. You know, I've been a manager for four months had a terrible time. And all these, to be fair, have done, I think, a good job for two and a half years. But this is going to put him under massive pressure. The last thing I'm going to do is start turning on his staff. Right. Not Gary. Okay, he's got not turning on his staff. staff. We're talking but about the actual experience of Manchester United. All the stays in the sack his staff. I mean, to be no, fair, no, that's what happens. When the muck hits the fan, everyone gets a bit. And that's what's happening here tonight. Okay. Like, so, Gary, unfortunately for Gary, as I said, it's, it's reached the point now with Gary Neville and his punditry with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer where he's a man who is torn. He's a man who part of him knows that Solskjaer isn't good enough. But part of him, which is stronger than that, is the bond that he's built with Solskjaer over an extended playing career at Manchester United. He's not going to go and throw, toss that friendship and bond to the wind to say, even even if he does feel it, which I think he does, there's part of him. Gary is a smart man. Yeah, of course there's part of him. But that's why it's so hard to be impartial. Because something will happen at some point in your life which you relate to more. It's like jokes in comedy. You're more offended by jokes in comedy when it when it hits home to you when it when the the the, the topic of the joke is something that you know you've had past experience with, <clears throat> and that really is why it's such a difficult situation for Gary Neville. It's such a difficult situation for Manchester United. And look, let's let's go on and see what else was said in this whole 
I'll tell you what, it was it was pretty mad. I'll be completely honest. It was pretty mad in that um, post-match interview on Sky Sports between all of them. Go up here and see what else is said. And this is when they're speaking about managers. Season. Ollie's got to win a troll for this season. And I think they'll stick with him to the end of the season. But this is painful. Look, in any other club, he's in massive trouble tonight. In any other, to be fair, part of Manchester United's recent history, maybe, he would have been in trouble. But because of what's happened with Van Gaal and Mourinho and the change that's happened... They're not going to do that now. Look, I, I personally would just disagree with that as, as a final point. I, I would disagree that the, the, the past with Van Howe and the past with Mourinho has has um, scarred Manchester United so much that they won't do that again. Now, we, as I said, the things have to be different this time. Whatever comes next after Solskjaer, and I think that has to be what Manchester United are doing now behind the scenes. I don't think it's waiting until the end of the season. I don't think that's the right decision for our club. But what needs to happen, and this is what I mean about poor planning, Manchester United, for, for us to not have a plan in place, of, you know, what if, what if it all goes wrong? For not to, to not have that plan in place is terrible mismanagement. Terrible mismanagement by Manchester United. And whatever happens next, as I said, I don't want to see a U-turn. What we've done there with Mourinho, and Va we've done huge U-turns. Manchester United cannot afford that U-turn now. Whoever comes in has to walk down that same path. That's why someone like Conte is someone who Gary Neville is jarred by. That's why maybe someone like Ten Hag or is someone that fits in line. You can see the vision a little bit more. It kind of makes more sense. There's more ticks in those boxes as to what Solskjaer had to what Ten Hag would have rather than Conte, who comes in. He's a Chelsea man. He comes in two years, see you later, boom. That didn't work for Manchester United. Van Hal didn't work for Manchester United. Solskjaer, I would say, to a large degree, has very much worked for Manchester United, but to the point where he's brought us back to where we need to be and he can't take us where we want to be. Two different things. Now, I want you to let me know in the comments, what do you think about this whole reaction from Gary Neville, from Jamie Carragher, from Graham Souness? What do you agree with? What do you not agree with? It's, it's going to be... A, well, it's going to be a hell of a week for Manchester United fans, really, in the build-up to Spurs, and then we've got Atalanta, and then we've got City, but... All the talking points now, as far as I'm concerned, have to be about what comes next after Solskjaer because I just think what we've seen there against Liverpool is that I think it's past the point of no return. That's what I think anyway. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below as always. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Until next time though, take it easy.